What is up? What's happening? What's going on guys? It's so good to see all of you. I see Biola in the chat making me feel great, making me feel like a boss. Jane, welcome in. It's good to see you again. Umicorn, I, I'm, I hope you're feeling better. I hope you're feeling alright. Saying finally enough energy left to stay. I hope you're feeling good, man. Um, Fergie, good to see you. Sam Peterson, the one and only. Welcome in. Uh, here holding down the chat, keeping us all safe. Gareth, welcome in. I saw Kieran Lewis again. Kieran, what's up? What's up, dude? Mercurial, welcome in. Misty, hello. It's good to see all of you folks. Bliss, good to see you. George, hello. Lorenzo, welcome. It is so good to see all of you folks in the chat today. I'm so pumped for episode two of this week's spread of the Adobe Live game show. Uh, so for those of you who maybe have never been in here for the show, maybe you're new to Adobe Live, um, whatever the case is, please, if you are over on YouTube, please come over to Behance.net slash live. We'll have our wonderful mod put a link in there for you that you can follow because Behance is actually where I am reading the chat. I'm not reading the YouTube chat. It's a lot to, it's a lot to do all at once. Um, I'm already reading one chat. I'm putting on the stream. I am producing the show with tech on my side. I'm doing the art. I'm doing all this stuff. Um, and two chats are a little much to handle. So if you could come over onto Behance where I can see you, where I can answer your questions, all that stuff, that would be great. Uh, but what is the Adobe Live Game Show? The Adobe Live Game Show is a nifty little segment that I love to do where I spin a magical game wheel and we get ourselves these six keywords here at the bottom of our screen. So yesterday we spun and we got unicorns, warm tones, magic, fantasy, building, and minimalism. And it's, it's been fun so far. So we did a bunch of sketches yesterday to figure out what kind of project we are going to put together uh, pertaining to these six words. And the, the name of the game, uh, the goal here is that I have to use at least four of them um, in a project. And if I get any submissions from the chat during the show, if we get at least 10 for every 10 we get, uh, I have to spin a brand new super fancy top secret wheel called the hype wheel. We enter hype mode and whatever comes up on that wheel, I have to add to the project. There's no swapping things out and only using a certain amount of them, like the keywords that we got at the beginning. Whatever comes up on the wheel, I have to just add in to the, uh, to, to the, to the project. And we've only ever done that once. It's only happened one of the weeks that we've done out of five weeks where we reached the hype mode. Uh, status in the chat and I had to just figure out how to do stuff on the fly in the middle of my project. Um, it is a lot of fun. I hope that you will join me. I'm actually going to pull up the discord right now though because I want to I want to show you we got uh, we got a submission. Um, between yesterday and today. Uh, so if you head over to bit.ly slash PS Discord, you wanna make sure that P and S are capitalized, you will go to the Photoshop Discord. Many of you may already actually have it set up. You may already be a part of this Discord. Um, and if I pop over here, you can check it out, see what's going on. It looks like uh, Senchen uh, actually posted, used unicorns, warm tones, or posted the, the words, unicorns, warm tones, magic, fantasy, magical, building, minimalism. Did I miss something? No, you actually added an extra one in there. We were gonna add, I think we rolled for something else. I don't know that it was fantasy and magic. I'm not sure, but I think that they all go together and I think that you've created just this really nice piece. So you have a building, you have um, this wonderful rainbow, which I, when I see rainbows, I think of unicorns. So I think that's great. Um, we've got like this actually kind of a minimalist design, even though there's a lot going on here, it's all got like this really nice smooth kind of texture to it. We've got some warm tones in there. We've got a lot of really cool stuff going on. Wade, what's up Wade? It's good to see you. 
Um, so thank you so much for the submission. Again, um, if you are wanting to participate today, you do not have to complete a perfect 100% finished piece um, like our friend did here. This is amazing, but you can also post in sketches um, that you're doing based on the keywords. You can post what you're working on outside of the game show if you want. I think I would accept that. Just show me you're working on something. You're sitting here, you're creating, you're being, you know, you're making progress in your art journey um, and they don't have to be done. Post a work in progress, 10 minutes later, post another work in progress. Show us that you have made some headway. Um, and for every 10 things we get, um, that is what we will, uh, when we will activate our, uh, our hype wheel. No, wait, I'm just looking, I'm looking here and I'm seeing magic and fantasy are here. It's magical that isn't part of our, um, our, our keywords. So, but I think like we did roll, that was what it was. We rolled for and got magic, then we rolled and got magical. And I didn't realize I had both of those things on the, on the wheel, which we do. So they're kind of like the same, the same thing. Um, all right. And one of the things I wanted to address before we jump back into our work is somebody asked, can we use the wheel or only the show host? I can't seem to find it, but I think it would be awesome for practice as I struggle with ideas. Yes, I'm going to give you guys the, uh, the answers. I'm gonna give you all of the magic behind the scenes for the game show because I would like to be able to give you um, a way to maybe create one of these for yourselves so that you can have a little auto prompt maker, uh, if you will. So if you go to pickerwheel.com, this is how I did this, how I designed this. If you go to pickerwheel.com, um, you can actually come in and make your own picker wheel. You can add a bunch of keywords. You can actually save keywords. So if I go to open list, I've got all these different things. I've got the um, medium wheel, the hype wheel, the game show wheel for this show. And I also have subjects, genres, and other things for my own show over on my Behance channel called Creative Cauldron. Um, and you can have multiple wheels that have different things on them. You can change the wheel colors. You can do all sorts of cool things. Um, um, and then you can just spin whenever you need to spin. You can go ahead and do your thing. Um, you can spin for something else. You can hide the choice so that that is not added to this current um, spin session that you're doing. And it's a really cool way to kind of devise a method for picking something for yourself to draw if you don't really have any ideas or you don't feel like picking. Um, so go ahead, go to picker or picker, picker wheel. Yeah, pickerwheel.com um, and make yourself a wheel. Uh, but now without further ado, we are gonna jump into our Photoshop. So we designed a lot of different things yesterday. We started a lot of really cool projects um, and we landed on our punk rock Sith Lord unicorn. He's a really cool guy. Um, he's, he's pretty, he's pretty nifty if I do say so myself. I'm super biased because number one, it's my art and number two, it's Star Wars colors. Um, but, uh, I, I like him a lot. So we're going to keep painting him up. And one of the things I want to do before we kind of really dive into, um, the meat of like detailing him and all that good stuff is I would like to make some changes because yesterday we started sketching this out. And it was a horror show. It was like, I had this weird, vaguely anthropomorphic cow head. And I was like, this doesn't look like a horse at all. And then we sort of made it look more like a horse. And then now we're stuck with this unicorn donkey that doesn't quite look like a unicorn. So there's two things that I'm gonna change today because I've had some time away from it and I can come back and kind of look at it with fresh eyes. And those two things are number one, I think that when I use these lines here around his snout to um, accentuate like the, the mouth of him, I think it makes him look more like he has like a cow mouth. So I wanted to kind of erase those a little bit and I could even come in and kind of smooth it down just a little bit um, and make, let me see, I might change the way that the nostrils are just to kind of just to kind of change it up just a little bit. I think I might. Um, and then the other thing we want to do that somebody actually suggested yesterday was, I think we're going to change the position of his ears because with his ears up like that, it kind of has a little bit of a donkey look to him. So we're going to round out the top of his head and we are going to maybe, I mean, we could put his ears down if we wanted to put his ears down. Um, that, that might be kind of cool if his ears went down. Um, and see if we can, we can do it like that. It might still be a little, 
I don't know, maybe that looks more like a goat. I'm gonna pull up my reference um, and we're gonna we're gonna sort these ears out. Um, and then we're gonna get into some like actual detailing. We're gonna kinda kinda render him out. Um, the cow donkey unicorn. Yeah, the cow donkey acorn. Oh gosh. Indeed. Ahmad! Welcome in. It's good to see you. Um, it's the ears, right? Long like a donkey, not short like a horse and a unicorn. Um, uh, way too loud at work when you said unicorn donkey. Oh no, Christy! <laughs> Everyone's like, Christy's definitely doing some work. She's handling her business and then she pulls out her phone and it's like, unicorn donkey! Yeah, are you guys ready for this? And she's just sitting there like, crickets. Cr <laughs> crickets! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, this donkey is the goat. Listen, Sam, um, everybody gets one today. I don't know how many dad jokes I can take. That's that's your allotted, you've reached your quota of painful jokes. <laughs> it's like the type of character that would be in Shrek. A donkey, exactly. A donkey, exactly. Um, okay, I'm gonna type in unicorn. Unicorn. Images. Yeah, uh, I don't actually see that they have super big ears. Um, I do see that they go upward, but they're much, much smaller and they're tapered. They're like pointed. So, let's see if we can do something like this. Oops. Uh, might go with something more like like that um, and it might be even cool just to kind of give him like a mane that comes down a little bit I don't know I'm where this is still like a little like sort of experimental um, obviously we are more in the final stages and we're getting ready to kind of go into work but I think that looks better I think it does um, and then we can still put we feel like we should put a chomp out of the ear um, and then we can do a little ring still. I think it's still cool to do a little, a little ear piercing. Um, okay. So we got our, we got our ears. I think that looks less donkey like. It might even be, um, that his jaw is very, very strong. That might actually be it. Let's see if I can kind of weaken the jaw, make the jaw a little thinner. That might do it. That's cute, that's cute. And I'm gonna bring the edge of the tooth in here. Maybe his teeth are a little large. That might be a little more, a little more sleek, a little more unicorn-esque. Um, loves me some Voodoo Val. I'm so glad. <laughs> just th thanks, Val. I just wanted that one. Excellent. His horn can pierce the sky. Just we should just we should should just you know maybe we should take some serious creative liberties and like he's a unicorn. Um, he's anthropomorphic. Um, he likes to listen to My Chemical Romance, obviously, um, and then maybe he also cosplays as Thor. Maybe that's what we do. Um, and honestly, if I decide to do that, none of you can stop me. Someone could say, could give me a warning afterwards and be like, this is not good design, but you guys can't keep me from doing it. I won't, I won't though, I won't. <laughs> Not trying to ruin my reputation for being the kind of person who draws Sith Lord unicorns on a perfectly respectable professional broadcast. Why would you ruin that? Um, Shauna, Mama Shauna, Parmigiana, welcome in. It's good to see you. All right. Um, I'm going to, like, we kind of blocked out the shapes yesterday, but then I noticed that, like, I just ended up sketching all over the place on different layers anyway. So we're going to block this out one more time um, and then kind of finalize this. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually block out the shapes and I am going to focus on painting them individually. So we're not just going to block them out and put the whole thing together. We're going to paint it as we, as we make the shapes. 
So I am going to put in this collar. I'm not gonna paint this other side, but I am going to um, kind of draw the other side just so I can see it there, so I can visualize. Um, actually, what I might do is bring this over like that and then have this other side have that panel that sticks out. So, because um, if you've ever worn a leather jacket or you see a leather jacket, they kind of, you know, come around and sometimes they, they cross over and then the other side will come in and then this kind of comes out or however that, however it does that. I'm not sure how it does it, but we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna sort it out that way. I think that would be a good choice. Um, okay. And I am going to start to um, hammer this out into a very distinct sharp shape. And then we're gonna use a clipping mask. So I'm gonna call this collar. If I can double click this, there we go. Um, I think collar has two, yeah, collar, collar has two L's in it. <laughs> um, make a new layer, we're gonna create clipping mask. Um, I'm actually gonna move my set up over yonder, over this away, and I'm gonna tilt my thing up like that so I can get a better, better look at it, okay. Um, all right, so now we have our clipping mask and I am gonna take, uh, I think this brush and I'm gonna paint this up. So um, when you start illustrating, if you are gonna, I'm, honestly, this is true if you're doing illustration, you're doing um, like painting. If you're doing illustration that's more um, cartoony, uh, something that has sharper shapes and flat colors, this is true if you're doing graphic design and you are kind of combining things to to give it like an interesting looking graphic design. This is true if you're doing UI UX design, you're trying to create a scene in your app. Um, it's also true in video or uh, photo editing when you start um, to composite things together maybe. And that is to imagine the subject that you are trying to create in a 3D space and imagine how the world around it would interact with that item or that character or whatever it is you're doing. So when I approach this, um, I'm going to take a darker value and I'm going to put that darker value over on the side because we know that this is gonna be underneath his face. Um, it's gonna be in shadow. A lot of this is gonna be in shadow even coming up to um, the front portion there. Um, so we know that that's gonna be accurate. We also know that part of this is gonna start folding over. Um, oops. Uh, so we can start kinda bringing this, oops, uh, bringing this over here. Let me get my eraser um, and kind of pulling this over like so. Um, and then we can kind of put that in right there. So we've got this shape there. And all I did was imagine it in that 3D space is try to um, kind of bring that reality um, into here. So we've got that down. I'm gonna put a little bit more shading here because what we wanna give is this um, effect, like this is kind of rounded. If you can put like some directional lines um, here and kind of use the darker values to kind of sculpt that into being. Um, and if you wanna be fancy, you can even come in here because maybe it dips just a little bit right here. Um, and then maybe it darkens as it kind of folds over the breast right there. Um, and then maybe we also do it back here. Maybe it also has just a little bit kind of coming up around here. Um, so we have that, and then I will take a lighter value on another layer that is also a clipping mask, um, and I am going to lighten it up. So let's kind of see how we might put that in here kind of get a lighter value going on here. I might actually turn this down on a lower opacity so that it's not so harsh. There we go. 
turn the fill down on that. Boom. Um, so we have our collar. Um, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna group these together. I'm gonna call this collar again. Um, so we have our collar, and then underneath I'm going to make a shape. Let's get a darker value. I'm gonna make a shape that it encompasses like his shoulders um, and the rest of the bust here. I love this texturing style that you don't see much of this, but you make it look so refreshing. Thank you, Shammy. I'm glad that you are enjoying it. Um, and I would love to see you try it for yourself if you're interested. There's another way that you can do this because I know not everybody in the chat today actually has, because I'm using a stylus. I have a Wacom Cintiq. I'm gonna actually bump this up here. Um, I have a Wacom Cintiq, um, so I do have a stylus pen and I have a tablet in front of me that actually has a screen on it um, so that I can look down at what I'm doing. Um, and uh, it's it's easier for me to, to do it like that because then I have like a, a digital pen that I'm actually using uh, and that is pretty easy to do. Um, especially if you're someone who's familiar with drawing with a pencil. Um, but for a lot of you folks at home, you are, you, you know, you maybe don't have um, access to tools like this, or you maybe just, you know, you're not typically uh, an illustrator. And if you wanted to try something like this, you wouldn't be able to do it exactly how I'm doing it. Um, but there is a way that you can kind of get the same effect and use the same sort of technique and that is um, you can take the pen tool if I hit P on my keyboard you can take the pen tool and you can you know come in and make a, a shape if you want honestly if I was gonna do it with this uh, what I could do is I could go like this you know I could make that back portion and I could actually block in the shape the way that I want it um, so kind of recreating this okay so now I have a shape um, and I can say, make it a shape, all right? I'm gonna hide all of this actually. Um, so I've made a shape and then what I can do is I can actually come in and use gradients. So I'm actually gonna do this with a mouse because, and I could have done that shape with a mouse, but just to show you folks that if you don't have access to certain tools, you can do a similar thing. Um, so I can make a new layer, make it a clipping mask, just like I did. Uh, come over here and grab a gradient tool. Um, and I'm gonna set this to, to my basic um, gradient from color to transparency. Uh, and then I'm gonna grab another, another shade. Um, and I know that there's gonna be light over here so I can kind of come in and, and start shading this in. Uh, and then I can put it onto a dissolve, which will kind of give it a texture. I can make another uh, layer, put that on a clipping mask and I can grab an even lighter shade here and I can put that here. Okay, we'll put this on a dissolve as well, um, just to kind of give it like a like a noise texture. Um, and then if I merge these, um, if I can, let me mix it out of that. Um, then it kind of looks like that same kind of textury color. So you can kind of noodle around and try to achieve. You could also go and find texture images and use blending modes to overlay textures once you start coloring stuff in like this. Um, and the same is true even if you want to do something that's a little more complicated like the way we did our collar here. So this was easier for me to maneuver because I had a stylus. However, you could make the shape of the collar and then you could come in and make the shape of the shadow over that collar. And then you could use clipping masks to put the textures into each shape. So this lighter part would be a shape, this darker part inside would be its own shape, and then start putting textures in there. So there's a lot of ways you can do it, especially, you know, remember I said, graphic designers can use a lot of these techniques. Um, you, you could do that if you were doing a, a promo for social media and you needed to make yourself a sphere that looked like a 3D sphere instead of just a circle. Make yourself a shape, add in um, some, some gradients, put that dissolve texture on there and start merging things together. Use a noise texture and illustrate with a mouse using the same technique. Um, used to have texture images every time uh, 
I, I will give this a go. You should, Shami. I would love to see what you create. Uh, your female Venom was pure awesome. Oh, I'm so glad you liked it. I, I had such a fun time doing that. I'm actually going to pull that up just in case you folks want to see. Um, so I have a show that I do over on my personal Behance channel now called Creative Cauldron. It's another game show with more wheels and epicness. Um, and we get little prompts, little mystery prompts to do. Um, and I did, um, I was actually surprised that Adobe retweeted it. I wasn't sure if this would be like something they would retweet, but I figure since they retweeted it that it's cool to show. But I did a female Venom. Um, this is one of my latest paintings that was super fun. So I usually do paintings like this, but I can't do that in an hour. Um, I think it took me like two and a half hours for this one on the on the stream. But um, usually my paintings are like this, like I, I get super, super detailed and do crazy stuff. Um, but I did this one for, for one of the other things, which was fun. Um, glad you like it. Such a whiz, foul attention to detail is beyond awesome. Kieran, you're wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, uh, totally want to see it. Yeah, yeah. Venom. Venom's cool. I'm excited for the new Venom. I, I don't know if you guys are excited for it, but I'm losing my mind over it. I... The Venom movie, so... I know that some people weren't happy with it, um, but it was really inspiring for me, um, like big time. It was it was such an inspiring film to me uh, because I felt like the visuals were really cool, and I can understand how somebody would not have in, have liked the film if they were maybe a fan of the comics because it was very different from um, the way the comics were, uh, mostly because there was no Spider Man. Um, you know, and Spider-Man's kind of a touchy subject in the MCU uh, because the, I think, historically, Spider-Man has belonged to so many different companies over the years and, and the rights change hands so often that it's hard to make a, you know, Spider-Man consistent in a lot of films. Um, but I, I enjoyed it. I had a good time. I thought the, the, the humor was funny. I thought the... The characters were compelling, and I thought that the the special effects was really cool. So I got really into it, even though I only watched it. I watched it for the first time like three weeks ago. So when I, by the time I made that Venom painting, I was really on like a Venom kick, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna have to do a girl Venom. <laughs> I have to do this. Um, this is what I've been training for all this time. Is just illustrating a girl venom the whole time um so i did it um and the new one's coming out very soon um i'm gonna get like some dark color under the lip of this collar right there i think that's necessary kind of bring that up right there i'm gonna grab a black like an actual black and kind of put some black over here there we go maybe just a tiny bit up here um kind of carve out the top of that shoulder maybe a little bit under here just to really show that this is a, you know, that this, this piece of the collar is above. And you notice how that was not a very big change, but that suddenly brought it into 3D space. Look at that. If I hide that layer from flat to not, and it's not actually super hard to do if you want to start to create something like this. It might take a little bit of practice to start to execute this technique properly and get the desired results, but I hope that when you folks see other people illustrating, you know, I show you my female Venom, I'm sure, you know, you've seen a lot of other people that do some pretty detailed illustrations. Um, it's not really a matter of like, oh my gosh, this is so hard to do. How could I do this? There's so much going on here. It's about keeping little things in mind, and if you want to do a very um, big extravagant painting, just making sure you never forget those little things so you can do them to all the places in the painting. Um, so that is um, that is how I keep trucking on and keep doing my thing. Uh, and I hope that if you folks want to do it, that you try it, you know? Just go for it. Doctor Strange, oh, Doctor Strange is cool. Dude, when I watched Doctor Strange for the first time, I was like, oh, he he about to he about to throw down. He's not playing. And then he did like the thing where all of his arms unfurled, and I was like, it's on, it's 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 over for them. It's it's over. How are you gonna fight a guy with 26 arms? Good luck. Good luck. He's got a cape on, his cape is sentient. Good luck. Whatever. 
He's got his collar popped and he's got like silver fox stripes down. He's He looks more stylish than you do. He's already got you beat in the fashion department. What are you gonna do to Doctor Strange? If he doesn't like you, he'll just make a portal behind you and like sneak up on you instantly. What are you gonna do to Doctor Strange? Um, all right, so we got our collar in there. I am going to, let's see, I'm gonna, we got our collar in there, we got our jacket in there. I'm gonna group these things. I'm gonna call this jacket. Um, how are we doing on time? Let me pick up my time. 3.30, okay, we still got 25 minutes. We are good. Yeah, this sketch is looking awesome. I'm glad you like it, Christy. Thank you. Um, favorite Marvel character? Sorry, I've gotta ask. Oh, my favorite Marvel character. Like if I have to choose one, I am a big Loki fan. Loki's a big deal. Loki's like Marvel Kylo Ren for me, you know? He's mad at his dad. He's mad at his mom, but he really loves his mom. He's got long black hair. He's angry all the time. And he's like not chill and he doesn't do cool stuff, but at the same time, like you kind of want to love him and you kind of want him to be happy. Like he's mean, but you're like, I want to be happy for you. Kylo Loki I like I just want I want to see a smile on your face you just gotta stop being dumb you, know, you just gotta stop <laughs> I'm very partial to Loki um I I like Spider-Man I like I like Tom Holland's Spider-Man I've never really been a fan of Spider-Man until Tom Holland was Spider-Man um, and I yes Simon and Iron Man um, Iron Man I think is probably the greatest Avenger um, I think he does, I think he puts in the most work, honestly. You know what I mean? I think, I think Iron Man actually puts in more work even than Thor. I don't think anybody does more work than he does. Um, and I think that he is somebody that's very difficult, but I think that he also, um, doesn't really matter that he's difficult because he does have a good heart, truly. He has, he has a, a very, a very good heart. Not pure enough to pick up Thor's hammer. Um, my, my second favorite Avenger, like if we're talking about Avengers, and I don't count Spider-Man as an Avenger because I think he needs to graduate high school first. Um, my second favorite Avenger is Captain America because Captain America is literally the, the sweet precious boy. Um, I think that he is kind of an inspiration as far as just like, being a good person um, and treating other people with respect and not allowing yourself to succumb to jealousies and to treat people poorly because you are frightened. Because um, I think that this is a, this is something that really helped me through my art journey, honestly, because I think that everyone in chat here today has probably felt many times like they were not good enough. Um, because it's hard to put your art out there to, you know, to take something from your heart and, and share it with the world and kind of open yourself up for, for judgment of, of the heart. Right. Um, and when I was going through some really hard stages in my art journey, I watched the, the first Captain America movie. Um, and I thought, gosh, this guy, he has to be scared. Who would not be scared? You know, even after, even after they gave him the, the powers, like he has to be scared. He has to be terrified, but look at him do it. And it's fictional, you know, but I think that there is some truth in there. And that is that, you know, when things are scary, there's a, you know, and you're, you're feeling inadequate and you're feeling like you can't do something like other people can, and you don't know what you're doing. Um, there is still a way to handle it that is not damaging to other people and is better for you and those around you. Um, so handling fear in a positive way and staying true to your own morals and treating other people with respect is something Captain America taught me and something that I strive to always do. And that was a big deal for me when I found Captain America. So. Uh, where on Discord are you? I have two Discords. I have one Discord that you can be a part of if you are subbed on Behance, which you can get the link once you sub to on Behance. Um, but I'm also in the Photoshop Discord, which is this Discord right here. Um, and that's where the Game Show Discord is. So you can check out 
this link, bit.ly slash PS Discord. You gotta make sure that P and S are capitalized or you will go to a weird poker server. So make sure that you get that right. <laughs> Amazing logic behind Spider-Man, Val. I think he should totally be a character called The Watcher from the show. What? Yes! Ah! <laughs> I just watched the latest episode last night. Oh, I love What If, by the way. I love that. And um, The Watcher is legit. The Watcher does low-key look like a really stylish baby, though. Am I right? I'm not wrong, right? I'm not wrong. Oh, I can't, I can't be the only one that's thought that. Um, I refuse to believe I'm the only one that's thought that. Um, okay, I'm gonna put the sketch of our guy um, up top here so that I can um, keep an eye, keep, keep my eye on the ball, so to speak, as far as where I need to shade. Um, and I'm gonna make a layer in between them and I'm gonna come in with a darker shade here and I'm gonna start just adding in some, some good shading. I'm gonna make sure this is on a clipping mask though. Um, I would love to know, um, all of you folks out there, what are some of your favorite um, pop culture things and uh, what, what, what sort of things in pop culture really inspires you to keep creating? Like when you see X movie you know, this just really gets me pumped to make something or, you know, like what exactly is it about certain things that really kind of get you going and keep you motivated? What, what kind of pop culture stuff do you see? And you're like, I have to paint now. I gotta paint. Um, I'll tell you what one, I know it's gonna be this for me. I just don't, like, I just haven't watched it yet. I'm waiting until I, um, take a, I'm gonna take a trip and, um, visit my boyfriend and we are going to binge watch Star Wars Visions because it's the anime Star Wars and I have been trying to avoid spoilers for forever um, but I have accidentally seen some of the artwork and I'm telling you as soon as I watch Star Wars Visions no one is going to be safe from my Star Wars fan art. That like it looks amazing um, and I cannot wait. So that is definitely something right now that I know is gonna kind of get the creative juices flowing and like keep me involved in illustration for a long time. I wanna know what you, like what, what kind of gets the art gears turning for you guys? What really kind of sparks that artistic joy? It doesn't even have to be pop culture. You guys can share other stuff too. Like, you know, just I wanna know what you guys love and I wanna know if other people feel the same way. Okay, we kind of got this in. Got a little bit, it looks really basic right now. Like I feel like it could be better, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna noodle with it. Um, don't, don't lose hope when you feel that way though. Um, that's, a, that's, that's another thing is, uh, you're gonna have an ugly phase of your work. You're gonna, it's gonna happen. Um, if you think that when you sit down to create, that your ugly phase means that your art is not worth it. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta think a different way because everybody has that phase. There might be people who've been doing art so long that they can sit down and kind of sketch something in one go. But keep in mind that people can do that probably have like 10 to 20 years of experience where they can sit down and just make it. When I sit down to do art, sometimes I have some projects that go really well. Um, they kind of go off without a hitch. I don't have very much to worry about because I'm maybe I'm painting something that's very familiar to me um, but a lot of the time there's a there's a lot of moments in my work where I'm like do I know how to draw <laughs> do I <laughs> what exactly am I doing here what do who do I think I am <laughs> You know, it's something that happens um, and it's that's that's cool. It's okay So if you're drawing something and you're like this is not a very strong concept or I'm not really executing this idea as well as it could be Executed that does not mean that you're failing and your art is not good enough It doesn't even mean that the piece you're working on is not salvageable. It will not be successful You just got to kind of commit um, and and keep working um, know when something is a quitting game, you know, know when, when it's time to quit. But for the most part, it's like kind of just keep swimming. Like a great woman once said, 
just keep swimming. Know yourself, trust the process, you know, and uh, be nice to yourself. I think that's the, one of the main things that a lot of, that I need to learn and that a lot of you folks in chat, I know for sure you need to learn. Be nice to yourself, okay? Be nice to yourself. You're the first person in this world who is going to be nice to you. There's gonna be a lot of other people you encounter who are also nice to you, but you are ground zero for kindness to yourself because you are you. So be nice to yourself. No, no bullying yourself because of your art. Stylish baby, amazing. He is, he's a very stylish baby. Um, Kieran says, once I hear good music, um, like a good music tune, I feel the urge to keep it on repeat whilst editorial, uh, designing editorial layouts. Yes, I, I feel that. I feel that in my soul, man, because I am one of those people that listens to something on repeat. Um, I, I find a song that I like and it, it, you know, you ever listen to a song and you're like this right here and it's got like, you know, the, a breakdown or like a crescendo or something in some way that just really, it just hits perfect. And you're like, I, I love to hear it. I need this. The thing is, when I find that, I don't want to only listen to it the one time and then move on to 30 minutes of other music. I want to listen to that one piece that I really loved because that's what I'm into right this moment. And I don't want to, I don't, I, you know, I gotta, I gotta stay on it for a while. So sometimes that's the move. Sometimes I, I gotta kind of get it out of my system. And that might mean that I have the same two to three songs on on repeat repeat for like a week and that's just how it goes dory yes just keep swimming dory's a wise woman she's crazy but she's wise i love dory she's crazy but i love dory <laughs> She is, she is very unique. Let's say unique. Let's not say crazy. Let's say Dory's very unique. Um, and I love her. Finding Dory made me cry. You know how hard it is to be like a grown, a grown woman watching Finding Dory. Thank God I didn't go see that in the theater. I was watching it at home. Somebody walked in on me watching Finding Dory and they were like, oh my God, what's wrong? And I was like, nothing. I had a bad day. Get out. <laughs> Get out of here, it's private. <laughs> and then I press play again and I was like, you really do speak whale, Dory. They said you were crazy. They said you were a liar and you speak whale. You know whales <laughs> and you talk to them. Interstellar soundtrack is pretty intense. Yes, da oh, dude, Danny Elfman gets me all the time. Danny Elfman is really great. I listen to like, obviously I listen to the Star Wars soundtrack. That really keeps me motivated to, to design and create. That's a big deal for me. Um, and I also love to listen to the um, Elysium soundtrack. The Elysium soundtrack is pretty darn, pretty darn good. Um, kind of coming in here, by the way, just a little check in here. I am um, kind of rounding out these, these features um, of my piece. Kind of adding in these portions that really kind of give it personality. giving it some, some facial landmarks, you know? I think we decided that he is a, a facial scar kind of guy. I think we decided that. Um, so we're gonna do a little, a little face scar 
because he's cool. I don't know why having a face scar means you're cool. It just means, through, means you've been through some stuff and you survived and you came out of it very aesthetically pleasing. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm old and Finding Dory was, oh, wow, emotional. It was. It was. I was like, gosh, that is... This is real. It's not a joke. They're not playing around right now. Um, they're trying to hit me with some feels and make me feel some type of way, and they it they succeeded. Um, all right, so we're this is starting to come together. We've got like a whole kind of thing going on here. What, what I need to do, because I think I have about 10 minutes left. What I need to do is I need to put in... Actually, I'm going to trim the shape. I need to put in... Um, the hair and stuff. So let's let's do that real quick. I'm gonna turn that on. Uh, I'm going to actually group the neck and face together. Boom. Um, and let's grab a warm red color. We have to use a warm tone um, because that's what we gotta do. So I am going to shape this and I notice I haven't I haven't put the the horn on um, because what I also don't want to do keep this in mind whenever you're designing um, sometimes we overwhelm ourselves by trying to design every element of our piece at once and that is not always ideal some people can do it because they have been designing a certain kind of thing for a long time but for a lot of us especially um, if you are new to a particular concept trying to do all the work at once is not a good idea it's it can be very overwhelming and you can lose sight of certain things and become frustrated with your work um, one of the things that I try to do is to choose something to work on. You notice that as we've been going through this project, I've been like compartmentalizing certain portions of the piece and I've been hiding things um, and kind of doing stuff separately. The reason why I have done that is because sometimes I can't I can't visualize everything all at once. It just doesn't it doesn't work in my brain that way. Um, and then I get frustrated because I can't do it and I'm like, I'm trying to do a lot of work all at the same time here though. So maybe I should slow down and do this part and then do this part and then do this part. And it works for me when I do that, when I, I take a breath and um, kind of sort things out. It will also help you in the long run if you can do that because when you compartmentalize things and you start kind of systematically um, crossing things off the list as you go through a piece. It also makes you really think about what it is that you're doing um, and you start to organize things and, and kind of automatically plan what it is you're trying to accomplish in your piece. Um, and when you start thinking about things like that, uh, I think that you get faster and better at executing a certain kind of concept because you have it set up in your in your brain um, how to kind of check boxes off your list you know you kind of start to just do it that way so um, yeah compartmentalize stuff uh, develop a system for like doing stuff and try not to do too much work all at once um, it's not worth it it's not Okay, got kind of getting this hair in here. That's looking pretty good, man. That's that's looking pretty slick. We got it going on, like Stacy's mom. Okay, um, there we go. There's that. There's our our hair. Um, I'm gonna grab kind of a darker red, um, and I think, yeah, I think this is looking pretty pretty cool. We're, we're getting it done. Um, how much time do I have left? Because I know we're coming up on the end here. Uh, we got about five minutes. What? Okay, we got to get this. We got to get this uh, unicorn horn in here. This has got to happen. Let me group that together. 
Let's take a dark color. Um, and I may actually end up having to do just slightly more work on this outside of the stream, but I think that that's fine. Cause we did, I mean, I feel like we, we've done a lot of, we've done a lot of work for these, for these days. We've, we've done some solid, some solid illustration. Um, I think this is one of the first times where at least by the end of the second day, I don't have a full thing done, but, um, I think that that's all right because, um, we do have half as much time now with the new way that we've, we're scheduling this. Um, and I think that we did develop quite a lot of different concepts. Um, and I think that I am gonna do what I suggested you guys do at the beginning of the stream earlier, and that is to not be mean to myself. And instead I'm gonna feel proud of myself. <laughs> Gotta practice what I preach sometimes, right guys? There we go. All right, so we got our horn in here. I'm gonna put that up right there. Got our unicorn horn in and I'm gonna hide this um, and kind of take a peek at what we got here. So we got uh, our, our stuff. I think what I'd like to do is select all of this though and kind of bump, maybe not the neck. Um, I'm gonna group the neck separately and bump that outside. There we go. Um, and then I can come up here grab all of this, move his head up and back. There we go. So we're starting to get our, our little leather jacket unicorn in Sith colors in here. Um, I think I got maybe four more minutes. Um, I'm going to come in here with a clipping mask to this horn and I'm going to shade it. We're gonna make this pretty. Oops, I made that a smart object. We want a clipping mask. Um, Stacy's, I haven't heard that. Stacy's ma, na 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 na. Uh, where my 90s fam at? Where you at? Don't leave me hanging. Also want to see if maybe I need another brush for this. Let me get this brush. There we go. Something like that. Um, I'm gonna put a little more love on it, you know, because he needs a he needs a little bit of something, something still, but uh, not bad for now, you know. It was not bad. Um, I think I'm gonna bring the hair out here because we did end up putting hair on the back of his head, which I thought was cool. Um, it's not really so much a mohawk anymore. I don't know. Maybe what, maybe we, maybe we test without actually layer via cut. Ah, it doesn't look bad without the hair back there. Honestly, born in 1990. I'm born in 92. 92, baby. Um, all right, I think that that is maybe all that we can really do for now because we are gonna have to take off. I could probably just, you know, in our last moments here, um, uh, add maybe some little dividing lines just to start separating stuff. And I'm gonna post this on my Twitter. Um, so I hope that maybe you folks will um, follow me on Twitter. Um, I'll also post it in the Discord um, for the game show so you guys can see it there. Um, I'll probably post it on Instagram as well. One of the things that I wanna leave you with um, though, however, is there's a lot of stuff that's coming up um, pretty soon. Um, a lot of stuff happening in October, um, including Adobe Max. So if you guys wanna check out the website for Max, um, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna be hosting a couple segments and doing a spotlight at Max um, or here on Adobe Live during Max. Um, if you guys wanna check that out, there's gonna be a lot of really amazing Amazing people there. Kieran Lewis, who is in the chat, is doing a lab at Adobe Max. So you should definitely sign up for Max and check out Kieran's work. Um, and also, um, a lot of people were saying that they're looking for, like, you know, I showed off how to do the picker wheel because sometimes people come in here looking for prompts, and some people were saying that they need motivation or inspiration or ideas. Um, if you folks would like to join me starting tomorrow on October 1st, I am doing something called October. And I know that that sounds 
odd, but October as in octopi. Uh, if you guys want to follow along with me and participate, um, you folks can actually join me. Um, I'm gonna put the, let me actually grab, hold on, where's my, there we go. Um, this is the little promo I made. Uh, if you guys wanna join me for October, uh, it is a, an octopus illustration challenge for every day in October. Squids welcome, cuttlefish welcome. Um, I've posted a list of 31 keywords and every day I'm gonna be illustrating um, a little tentacled friend from the ocean uh, based on these words. Uh, and that starts tomorrow. So if you guys need a little boost, a little bit of inspiration and maybe a community of people working on the same thing to kind of keep you motivated, inspire you to do some art um, for this coming month. Join me. I hope you will. Um, there's a hashtag you can use to share your work with me. If you put it in a story on Instagram, I will add it to my story. And if you tweet it to me on Twitter, I will retweet it, give you a shout out, highlight your work um, and all that cool stuff. Um, but that is all the time I have for today. I got to take off. This is, this is, this is where we part ways. Um, this has been so much fun. Thank you so, so much uh, for joining me. It's been a blast. I hope that you folks will come and join us on Adobe Live tomorrow um, for some good stuff. There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of people who stream on their own channels um, who will still be streaming today and tomorrow and throughout the weekend and all that good stuff. So if you're looking for something else to watch, there's definitely something for you here on Behance. Uh, and I'm going to take off. Adios, everyone. Happy designing. Um, and I'll see you next time.